Hi, this is Bill Raymond, and welcome to this slides-only presentation on GitHub Pages. There will be demos, just not here in this video. Okay, so what are GitHub Pages? They are free, hosted, static pages that you can put up on GitHub. They can be a web page that just announces or introduces your product. They could be a blog, or it could be a full-blown website. It's all up to you. And when I say free, I mean free. So if you sign up for a GitHub account, you can have any number of repos with any number of web pages on them. As I understand it from a licensing perspective, if you have the enterprise or private cloud version of GitHub, then you can still get pages, but they're only going to be limited to the people that can see the repo. There are a few scenarios for why you want to use GitHub pages, and I'm going to cover those right now. The most obvious example for using GitHub pages is because you just have an app and you write the code for it, you tell everyone about it, you say, hey, check out my code, and so the people do, and they say, uh, where is the documentation? So you can use GitHub Pages to create documentation for your application. In this particular example, you're probably just creating some web pages with some links, maybe a logo at the top, and some text and some screen captures. So here you're just creating HTML or Markdown pages. We'll talk about what those are in future videos. Another reason to use GitHub Pages is because you might want to create a blog. And with the blog, you want other people to see it and share it, usually. You're creating this as a way to create a brand for yourself or for your app, or you're using it as a way to just communicate things that you've learned. The third primary reason for why you'd use GitHub Pages is to create a full-blown website. Here you might have an About Us section, a Product Details section, you might even have the docs for your application, or even your blog. And by the way, it doesn't even have to be for GitHub. This could be a full-blown website for your product that no one ever sees on GitHub. However, there's a really good chance that these things go hand in hand. Remember that GitHub pages are HTML or Markdown files, and that's code. So you need to store those code files somewhere. So you can, store, you can store them in an existing or a new repo. You can store your content in the master branch, which is also in the root folder, the master branch slash docs, or you can create a brand new branch called gh-pages. Now, I've been researching GitHub pages for quite a few weeks now to create this video. And here's the decision that I've come up with. This is my opinion. I think that any docs, blog, website, whatever you're creating should not be in your code repository. It should be in a brand new repo at the root folder in the master branch. And here are some of those reasons. Imagine a situation where you have a little repo with some code and you put it in a docs folder. That's all fine and good, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. But now imagine that more people start to collaborate with you, and your project starts to grow by leaps and bounds. People want to start not only providing pull requests for your code to suggest new code, they're also going to be suggesting new docs. Well, what if there's someone that's interested in collaborating with you on docs, but not necessarily the code? So now you're all kind of sort of interspersing documentation and code in the same place. I don't know that that's such a good idea. Now, obviously it's perfectly reasonable to do that, but you might want to have a separation between those things. Another example is, let's say you have a repo with your code in it, and then all of a sudden you want to break that repo up into multiple repos. For example, you have a project, where you, a repo where you created a software application and now you want to break it out into multiple repos where you have the user interface repo, the database repo, and the business logic repo, just as an example. Now where are you going to store all your docs? You're going to have docs in each one of those? Or do you just want to centralize them into sort of a master website that you can update as you need to? So there's benefits to keeping the docs in the same repo because you can just 
modify things as you go. It's easier. You don't need to swap from your code repo then to your docs repo. But I think that ultimately a good strategy for you is to just create a brand new repo and then link to it from the code repo. GitHub Pages comes in what I like to refer as two different flavors. They're not mutually exclusive of each other. You can do both, but usually you have one of two things that you're trying to accomplish. One is you're trying to just create some static pages, a website, a resume page that shows your work or the docs for your product. Usually that just has text, images, and a nice little styling so it has a nice theme to it. You can do that creating static pages. With Jekyll, this is a static site generator and this is built into GitHub. So it's a technology that's built in and I'm going to talk about how this all works a little bit later. But it has some interesting capabilities. It's what they call blog aware. So you can actually create a blog without a database. And I'll talk about how that works, but basically it pre-compiles any new blog pages that you create. And that way it's automatically generated when a user goes to a page. So if you create a new blog page, GitHub can see that you did that it automatically adds that to the website and people can read it. So I think what you really want to learn is HTML and Markdown, CSS, all that stuff, but you still want to also learn Jekyll. And I'm going to put a big focus on that in future demo videos. Now that you know the basics, let's just take a look at a really simple example. Here I have a GitHub repo that I created and I called it my repo. And you can see at the bottom of this page, I said, welcome to my app. And this is just the readme.md file. I went into the settings from my repo and I told GitHub to make the master root folder my GitHub pages page. So when someone goes to a different URL, and this is what it looks like, they'll actually just see that readme file. Now, of course, you could create an index.html page, or you could keep the readme file. You can link to that. You can create HTML or Markdown files, and they're going to look like regular pages to a user. They're not going to look like a GitHub page. Now, the way this kind of works is that when you are uploading your code into GitHub repos, what's happening really is that it's going through a content distribution network. So what's really cool about this is that it's not just a web page that it goes to, it's actually distributing your pages so they're closer to the people that are viewing it. Now, in the case of Jekyll, you can actually write some code and it's not server side code per se. It's just code that let's say, for example, lists all of your blog posts. This way, every time you create a blog post, you don't need to update the system. And you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, Bill, you said there's no database and you said you can't talk to a server. So how can I read that list of blog posts? Well, Jekyll has a unique setup so that you have a folder where your blog post exists. And then when you upload your blog or update your blog in your repo, this Jekyll site, static site generator automatically looks through that folder and updates the page that lists all of your blog posts. And that happens automatically. You don't have to do anything. So what will happen is you'll update your repo the Jekyll static site generator will run on your repo and then everyone will see your new blog post and you don't have to worry about any of that work with Jekyll. You just have to set up your site properly. Now let's talk a little bit about the development environment. Well, here's the thing, since you can just do basic web pages, some people actually just go and build their page and manage their page right in GitHub. They literally go to the github.com site and update their pages. Or you can just update those pages on your computer by cloning the GitHub repo, updating your computer, and then syncing that back up to GitHub. If you're doing local development on your computer, you're going to need something that can at least do things like edit HTML or markdown language. So it's usually a text editor that's geared towards coding. I personally like Visual Studio Code. You could use Notepad++, Sublime, or any of the other popular editors. Now, depending on your setup on your computer and which product you're using, you might also need to install the Git client 
or the GitHub client. If you plan on using Jekyll and the technology it comes with, and you probably will, then you're also going to need to install Ruby and then install Jekyll in there as well. So follow the instructions on this URL that's on the page here and go ahead and get that set up. Because Jekyll uses Ruby, I found that it's much easier to set up and configure on a Mac. Trust me, I tried doing this on Windows and kind of gave up. After I thought I had Ruby running, I still couldn't get my Jekyll site to run properly. It was really painful. So I just decided I'm going to use a Mac with Ruby, Jekyll, and Visual Studio Code. The next two videos I plan to publish, or maybe they're published depending on when you're watching this, is one video on how to just set up web, HTML, and markdown pages in an existing or a new GitHub repo. I'll show you how you can use themes and make it look nice, but basically just do basic, essentially, text editing. The next one is to show you how to set up a blog with Jekyll. And I'm just going to give you some of the bare bones information you need, but you're going to understand it after I'm done. It's surprising. There's so few videos out on YouTube and blog posts that actually describe how to get this set up on GitHub pages. So that's what I'm going to focus on there. And then I'll probably do some more along the way. So in the comments, let me know if there's something you specifically want to see, and I'll see about creating a video for it. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more like this, please like, comment, and click the bell to support my channel.